Hello and welcome back. So in the previous video we have set up our Firebase database. So now open your Visual Studio Code. Okay. Create the empty folder wherever you want, wherever you want your project. So this is the empty folder that I've created and select folder. So this will open your empty folder and click on terminal, new terminal and go here okay so now we write here npx create react app e-commerce enter okay your project has been created cd e-commerce and write npm start This will open up our project inside the browser. Go to your browser and it's loading. So at localhost 3000 port, our project is ready to go. Okay. So first step is to set up our Webpack Babel settings. So what is Webpack? Webpack is a popular module bundling system built on top of Node.js. So it can handle not all the combination and magnifications of JavaScript and CSS files, but also other assets such as image files through the use of plugins. So Webpack is recommended bundling solution and should be preferred over ASP.NET bundling. So let's install Webpack. Let me get out of this. Okay. Okay, first we need npm i webpack and then webpack cli dash dash save dev and we will be installing it with our dev dependencies so press enter So Webpack is available not only for working with React but for configuring every front-end project as well. Webpack will ingest raw React components for producing JavaScript code that every browser can understand. So it's very quite handy for a large-scale projects. Okay, Webpack CLI has been installed. Go to your package.json and go to your scripts and write inside your build Webpack mood production. Okay, control save. So at this point, there's no need to define a configuration file for Webpack. Older Webpack versions will automatically look for a configuration file since version 4 that is no longer that case. So in the next step we are going to configure our Babel for transpiling our code. Go to your terminal. Okay, so in here type npm i at the rate Babel core and we need our Babel loader as well and at the rate Babel preset environment okay and at the rate Babel preset react and save it as dev dependency enter so why do we need a babel here react components are mostly written in modern javascript syntax so take the class keyword for example stateful react components can be declared as classes or as arrow that are regular functions so but older browsers don't understand ecms script 2015 Thus, we need some kind of transformations. So that transformations are called transpiling. So Webpack itself does not know how to transform JavaScript. Instead, it relies on loaders. Think of them as of transformers. 
transformers are going to transform your code so that transformers are called loaders go to your package.json inside your dev dependencies or babel core or babel preset environment has been created so what is this babel loader this babel loader is the webpack loader responsible for talking to babel babel on the other hand must be configured to use presets we need two of them first is babel preset environment for compiling a modern javascript down to es5 and babel preset react for compiling jsx and other stuff down to javascript so the next step is to configure our babel okay inside your root folder create a file in here and create it with dot babel rc enter and inside it write our presets and we will write it inside array and first our babel preset environment and the second one is babel preset react and save it so now we are ready to write our webpack.config.js file to interact with our webpack configurations okay so create a new file in here and write the name webpack dot config dot js okay so inside it we'll write module dot exports and inside it we'll write here module and we'll write rules and inside these rules we'll write test with forward or backward slash dot js and jsx dollar sign and forward slash and we'll write exclude forward slash node modules again forward slash and use this loader and again webpack use loaders okay to transfer our code loader and the loader is our babel loader okay and okay so while working with webpack you need to understand four different concepts or the keywords that is entry output loaders and plugins we are checking our webpack now that's why we are writing the rules for js and jsx in the next videos when we will be working with our complex code with our e-commerce project then we will write our entry output and loaders and different plugins as well so what this code is doing here that every file with a js or jsx extension webpack pipes that code through babel loader with this in place we are ready to write or react so go to your source and app.js okay so i'm going to remove this header and this one too okay so we'll write here h2 this is our e-commerce project okay and go to your index.js so instead giving it root we will give it our container okay control save and go to app.js control save go to your terminal and write npm run build so it gave me error because it needs some entry point now we have changed our entry point from root to container
So in order to display our H2 tag, we need to tell Webpack to produce an HTML page. The resulting bundle will be placed inside our script tag. Okay, so Webpack needs two additional components for processing HTML. One is HTML Webpack plugin and another one is HTML loader. So go in here and type npmi HTML Webpack plugin. Okay, and HTML loader and save it with dev or loader and plugin has been installed okay you can see in here HTML webpack plugin and HTML loader okay now go to your webpack config file and in here place another object in an array of rules test forward and backward slash html dollar sign and forward slash and then use and the loader name is html loader and go below these are our modules and place comma and write plugins okay so plugin is html webpack plugin that we have installed okay so now write template source index dot html and then file name is equals to HTML so what is this HTML loader and a plugin so we write our rule here that every time when you see the HTML file then you should load with this loader and the plugin that we require here is index.html okay so template is source index.html so we'll write here just index.html we don't need to go inside our source folder so this is the template this takes the path in which your index.html file is located and this is just the name of index.html if you write this index.html inside our source folder then we'll write here dot source and stuff but we will create this file inside a root directory and we'll write here index.html okay so we'll write here doc type html html lang english and then head so inside this head we have different meta tags okay so I have added different meta tags. All of you know about the character set for UTF-8 and another meta tag is a viewpoint. So this property controls the size of the viewpoint. It can set the specific number of pixels that uh, can that width is equal to 600 or or you can set it with a device width. Okay. So the, how you can set the initial scale property controls that the zoom level when the page is first loaded, the maximum scale zoom size or the minimum scale zoom size so you can set these values inside a viewpoint so I have added it inside our e-commerce project so this HTTP give attribute provides an HTTP header for information and for value of content attribute just like you can see in here the coding cafe name okay so that comes from here and I've also added a link for a style sheet for CSS. You can go to CDN side and you can copy this uh, link. This is a more common link here. So if you see in here, the image of Coding Cafe and the name of the Coding Cafe is coming from here. 
So this image should be placed inside our static folder. Okay. So we will create a folder here and we name it static. All of the images will be placed inside this folder. Okay. So I'm going to place this image inside our static folder. Okay. Okay. Inside HTML and just underneath this header, we'll write here body and we'll write here div and we'll give the ID. Okay. And the ID is container okay and save this now okay now go to your index.js now this file is getting some entry point from index.html okay now go to your terminal and npm run build okay now it's giving us the error app.css because we have now included our webpack but we haven't included any loader on css file okay so we'll simply remove this css from here okay and we'll simply remove this css from here and we're also going to remove here save it go to index.js and save it and now write npm run build okay our project has been built successfully if we go above the dist folder has been created so this is the magnified folder and if you take a look on main.js then this is the magnified file okay so what the webpack will do here it will combine all of your code and will place that code inside one file and that file is called a minified file and this is very helpful in the efficiency of your project we will talk about later what this minified is all about what is this stuff and how we can read this stuff inside this minified file okay so you can call it as the output from your webpack webpack takes input and it process on it on with different loaders and it will give you the output with the magnified file so let's have a quick break in the next video we will be talking about our webpack dev server and after all of this configuration we will be going to start our project